We know that our future is electrified, and when it comes to EVs, the battery is considered as one of the most important factors influencing the scope of the product. Tesla has long used lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries on a large scale. With such batteries powering nearly half of the electric vehicles it will produce in the first quarter of 2022. Other EV manufacturers have also added LFP battery versions to some of their models. It's not surprising that Ford may introduce LFP batteries into its products soon. So what does this mean for the EV industry? Will Ford ever produce a winning EV? Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Voltage. We are here to acknowledge you with all the latest high voltage car updates and their features from top to bottom and also give you a brief analogy of them. So hurry up and subscribe to the channel and smash the notification bell not to miss any of our updates. With that being stated, let's jump into the business. Ford has been developing electric vehicles for over a century. Ford's desire to be a leader in electric vehicles dates back to the company's inception. During those more than a century, Ford created numerous plug-in concepts, a few production models, and a slew of gas-electric hybrids. However, the company's EV efforts are largely unfinished. Ford, inspired by Tesla, has confirmed that it will use LFP batteries in all electric commercial vehicles. Ion Boost Pro lithium iron phosphate battery cells will be joined by Ion Boost lithium iron batteries and Solid Power solid state batteries. The Blue Oval confirmed these details today as part of the Ford Plus electrification strategy, which includes the Ion Park Battery Excellence Center. Dearborn will vertically integrate battery technology similar to Tesla and will form a battery making joint venture with SK Innovation as part of the plan. Blue Oval SK is the name of the new entity and it is tasked with producing battery cells and arrays in two plants in the United States. The reason Ford desires control over the manufacturing process and supply chain is straightforward. According to the numbers, America's second largest automaker expects 40% of global vehicle volume to be fully electric by 2030. In 2020, FOMO Co sold approximately 4.2 million vehicles. More than $30 billion will be invested in electrification by 2035, and Ford hasn't said anything about its next-generation EV platforms. According to sources close to the Dearborn-based automaker, the GE2 and TE1 architectures for unibody and truck applications will be released. Global Electrified 2 is set to power the Mustang Mark E successor as well as a full electric Mustang pony car. The truck Electrified 1 will be used by the next generation of the F-150 Lightning, as well as the next generation Ford Expedition and Lincoln Navigator. Ted Canis, the general manager of Ford's North American commercial businesses and former head of electrification, will lead Ford Pro. Ford Motor Co. decided last week to split its electric vehicle business from its traditional auto business but not to spin off the EV business in pursuit of the white, hot stock evaluations that have preceded EV leader Tesla and intermittently fast followers like Rivian and Lucid Group, whose stock prices have recently suffered. The company met Wall Street halfway in its restructuring plan, which is still significant, and analysts were unanimously positive. Datatrek co-founder Nick Colas, a former Wall Street Autos banker who has been saying for a while that automakers will need to convince the street that these spin-offs aren't necessary sooner rather than later, called Ford's move an interesting reorganization. Auto companies rarely restructure their reporting slash organization charts in such a dramatic way, and such moves are always risky in terms of productivity. However, it does follow for clearer management accountability, which is always a good thing in the long run, he said. Despite solid sales of the well-received Mustang Mark E, Ford management's message is that the EV business isn't ready for prime time. Ford took the safer route of keeping its promising emerging businesses tethered to the profitable mothership for a longer period of time. This allows the EV unit, dubbed Ford Model E, and other tech efforts to invest up to $50 billion primarily from cash flow from the existing Ford, dubbed Ford Blue. That cash flow was $40 billion over the last two years, indicating that Model E will not need to rely on bond or stock markets to fund future growth. Simultaneously, Ford may be able to reverse some of the significant discount its shares trade at compared to EV Pure Plays. Ford chose to keep its businesses aligned, but report their results separately beginning next year, so Wall Street can begin to assess and value the EV business independently. Will it be successful? For the time being, the answer is most likely yes. Ford executives emphasize the operational and financial benefits of keeping the companies together. Farley emphasized the combined company's ability to finance its growth strategy. 
without access to capital markets, while aids detailed plans to share costs between the EV and gasoline-powered vehicle businesses, cut costs in the traditional unit, and get both sides of the business to work together to boost profitability faster than they likely could on their own in a press briefing. The plan's centerpiece is cut up to $3 billion in annual costs by 2026, with major targets including Ford's advertising budget, which Statista estimates at $2 billion in 2022 for just US spending, and the $4 billion a year cost of warranties, which Ford President Kumar Galhotra says will be addressed by improving Ford vehicle quality. According to Wedbush analyst Dan Ives, all of this could still lead to Ford doing the rest of the deal and completely spinning off its Ford E unit by 2024. The key will be to continue to expand sales of the electric Mustang Mark A and to deliver on the early promise of the electric F-150, as well as the electric e-transit vehicle for small firms, adding other models as the company grows. With the success of the F-150, investors will want to see them raise capital and double down in 12 to 18 months, Ives predicted will be able to value it once they start reporting unit sales and you can see demand in the EV business. It's the first step toward a possible EV business spin-off, Ives added. According to CNBC, Ford surpassed the $100 billion mark for the first time this year. Ironically, it did so by listening to what the market wants, which is, you guessed it, EVs. Ford is now America's number two EV manufacturer. It shipped over 27,000 Mustang Mark E vehicles in 2021 surpassing GM's 24,000-plus Chevy Bolt and Hummer EV sales. While both companies lag far behind Tesla, which sold nearly 1 million EVs, Ford has one huge rabbit in its car-making hat. The Ford F-150 pickup truck has been America's best-selling vehicle since 1981, each and every year. Ford's electric F-150 Lightning is in high demand. Due to high consumer demand, Ford announced that it will produce 150,000 trucks per year at a Michigan plant by 2023. The company's turnaround has occurred under CEO Jim Farley, who assumed the helm in October 2020. If Ford continues to rise in popularity, we'd like to hear Farley say, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said electric F-150s. And we came through. Ford's inclusion of LFP in other high-energy-dense battery chemistries would not be surprising. It's simply a type of lithium-ion cathode chemistry that has advantages and disadvantages and can be used successfully in some products. An intriguing development unrelated to Ford is the recent announcement of new LFP battery gigafactory projects in North America. The rumored upcoming CATL investment in Mexico is one such project. CATL is most likely the world's largest LFP battery manufacturer, though it also produces other types of batteries. The Mark E model is manufactured in Mexico by Ford. Another is the Goshen High Tech project in the United States, which has an agreement with an unnamed manufacturer to produce at least 200 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries between 2023 and 2028. Last but not least, the Ford Plus strategy includes Ford Pro a vehicle services and distribution company aimed at increasing uptime and lowering ownership costs among government and commercial customers. Still watching? We knew you'd love our video. Well, we'd be even happier if you could just hit that like button. Coming back to the scenario, what do we think about Ford's progress in the EV space? Ford vehicles of the future are poised to deliver excellent economy, smart technology, modern design, and thoughtful amenities. The future looks bright with these vehicles. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Which EV brand besides Tesla do you think is performing well in the market? Are you bullish about the EV industry? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.